This episode of Techzilla is sponsored by The Ben Heck Show. Time to get our AC Nation on. We got a Twitter from at Chris at Zinger for recommendations on a sensitive yet portable digital TV antenna. That led to a spate, a spat, a frenzy of suggestions <laughs> from the Twitterverse, the flat style RCA antenna that Robert considers his go-to product now has some awesome homegrown competition. Totally. Which, should we start with the, okay, actually, if the image on this HDTV looks bad, let me explain something. This is a gigantic concrete building our studio is in. We it are is reinforced bunker. concrete. There are quarter inch, <laughs> 12 by 12 inch steel plates that were designed for mounting canning equipment in the floor. We are in a Faraday cage. These antennas in normal environments are amazing. They really are. Uh, I have long recommended okay. this particular RCA one. Uh, it is a standard design that's been around for a long time. It's a flat panel design in a sense. And the benefit of basically these flat designs is that you can you can hang it on a wall. And it, it's omnidirectional in the sense that you can pretty much lay it either flat on its back or vertically or horizontally, like I said. And as long as you do that, you generally don't really have to point these too much. Uh, right. You get decent signal quality. So I, I've been recommending that for a while now. And so I threw it out there to see are there any other options. And this, this is available as an amplified or unamplified design where the amplifier plugs into a wall. Can, can I pull the tape off? Please do. We're actually driving the set you see right now with the antenna you see stuck to the front of the TV. That's, that's the wall antenna. And let me pull up the wonderful website for that company as well. There it's, you go. Pretty simple design. Uh, basically a laminated sheets of, I think, acrylic plastic with the copper tape, in a sense, creating the antenna design you see right there with the balin connecting to the wires taped to the bottom. Yeah. Pretty sturdy, and the key benefit right there really is just how thin it is. It will disappear behind Many a picture, things. a bookshelf. Even on their website, they even show it being hung behind. I love this idea of being able to take the picture off the wall, hang it, and then basically put the picture back up and you're good to go. It's also transparent, and they include a 12-foot white uh, coax cable as well. So that nice. you could paint it or you could, you know, Leave it if you already have a white wall, you're set there. This super sophistication, <laughs> I mean, this super sophisticated application of modern materials and technology must be expensive, right? I, 35 bucks. Yeah. And I have to say, direct comparisons to an amplified design flat mm -hmm. antenna, I, I, without an amplifier, I was pulling in more stations. This is really subjective overall, but yeah. when I did the channel scan on my TV at home, I pulled in channels I was unable to receive using my amplified design. And I'm able to place this in more places. I'm literally taping it to a window that I normally don't use or look out of, so it's really out of the way as well. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and there's some other good flat designs out there that are often mentioned. Uh, Mohu is another company that has their Leaf Plus amplified antenna design. This one, it's a little bit more money, but it also offers equal or, or similar performance to the wall tenant. And the other thing I really liked about this amplified design is that it uses a USB plug so that if your TV has a USB port, you don't need to find a wall outlet to run the uh, amplifier off of. Now, those two antennas were really the top recommendations from the folks I pinged out in the Twitterverse. And when I went ahead and did some additional research for other antennas that are out there, uh, my good buddy named Pete Putman, who wrote up an article for HDTV Magazine that pitted a bunch of antennas, including the ones that we just discussed right here. Uh, he basically pits them all against the humble $5 bow tie antenna that used to be available from Radio Shack, which they no longer sell. And I'm thinking because it was probably interfering with sales of their more expensive antennas. Essentially, the gist of his article is it doesn't matter what you want to do as far as receiving these signals over the air for free. Start cheap. There are great antennas available in the $40 to $60 price range that outperform much more expensive models out there. And he actually has a not only the list of his local stations, the antennas he tested, whether or not they pulled in the signals or not, but he also has some great uh, spectrum analysis as well from the various different antennas he's tested. A lot of great work here, and if you're really nerding out on your antenna stuff, that's something to check out. Also, if you want to create your own antenna, there are some great options for you as well. Uh, free HDTV should be available to anybody who wants it, really. And if you do a search for something like a DIY flexible fractal antenna or window antenna, you should see a few designs out there that you can pull together with a minimal cost. And I, I think it's just a great way. And if you're not, if you have a TV, a brand new HDTV made in the last right. few years, doesn't have to be brand new, they all feature built-in digital over-the-air tuners that are relatively sensitive. So if you have no other options and you want some live TV, check it out. Yeah, I mean, seriously, some coat hanger, some <laughs> aluminum foil, a little bit of patience, you can have a shockingly good HDTV antenna. HD delivered picture. And, and, and 
yes, we're talking about $40 plus antennas, but start cheap. Yeah, yeah. If you live in a place where you're getting good signal, it doesn't take much antenna to pull that signal in. There you have it. Yeah. Mr. Herod is regularly asked, what size screen should I buy? Mm. How big should my HDTV be? Most people actually <laughs> underestimate screen size when they're planning an HDTV or projector purchase. The home theater gurus at THX have done the math with 1080p video sources, and they want the screen taken up 40 degrees of your field of view at the most. You don't want the screen so big or that you're sitting so close that you have to look left and right. Like, there's nothing worse than, than getting the tennis ping pong, oh. tennis game ping pong effect when you're watching a movie. That will take you out of it. Yeah, it will actually, because the idea the is to be immersed, evolved. Totally. So, I'm thinking, <laughs> when people ask me what size screen, they usually give me, oh, here are the two options I'm thinking, should I go for the larger or the smaller screen? Consider what the good folks at THX have to say on this matter. For, we'll say, a 100 inch projection screen, the closest that you should be seated to a screen of that size would be about seven feet. It's a lot closer than a lot of people would expect, and mm -hmm. this is assuming 1080p video on a 1080p display, say something like a Blu-ray movie. If that's the case, you can sit pretty darn close to, in this case, a theoretical 100-inch display, up to seven feet close. Right. So if you have eight, nine, 10, or more feet of viewing distance available to you in your room, your screen size choices are pretty much unlimited. Yes. Uh, the 50-inch screen's definitely gonna fit. If you wanted to go for a 150-inch projection screen, you could make that work if the room will fit it. Here's, here's the thing, most of us, you know, we grew up, don't get too close to the television, <laughs> Robert, you'll ruin your eyes. And we were thinking like, and you know, 10 years ago, 32 inches was a huge standard definition television. The Kel factor comes in, which basically says, as the resolution of the screen increases, you should sit, you can sit closer to it more comfortably, right? Or totally. you almost have to sit closer to it to take advantage of the resolution. Totally. 720p, a football game on a 720p television that's 64 inches looks exactly like a football game on a, on a 1080p television that's 64 inches if you're 30 feet away from it across the bar. If you're sitting in a living room, you're going to want the 1080p in a big way. Without a doubt. And, and when I say those viewing distances, I am assuming best case scenario. Best right. case video, uh, your, your high definition Blu-ray sources on a, on a 1080p display. Right. However, if that's not the case, there are some other charts you can take a look at. Now, this is a little, little less, I'd say, intense than, say, what THX would recommend, but you get the benefits here. And one thing that I'd like to point out, really, is that depending on the quality, now, as, as the quality of the video increases, as we move down this chart, you can see that the viewing distance also decreases for a given screen size. So that, that's essentially what I'm trying to say here. If, if you're dealing with 1080p video, you can sit a little closer to the screen no matter what the size is, relatively speaking. Now, say for DVD video, on the other hand, if the, if the quality is less, or if the pixels on the screen for a given size are, are fewer, then you can sit further back. Or say your eyesight's better, and you can actually see the pixels on the screen, you just sit a little bit further back, and that will also improve mm -hmm. the visual quality. And, and regardless of, of you know, what content you're looking at or what you're trying to do, when you're shopping for a new TV, one thing to really think about is, you can probably go bigger than you think. Uh, look at the room that you're, you're tasked with putting a TV in and ask yourself, what is the largest size screen that could possibly fit within that space you have to work with? And once you're done with that, add a nice surround sound system too, so you get the good benefits of audio in addition to video. So, so the short answer is get the bigger one. Get the bigger one, always. <laughs> it, it, people underestimate how big of a screen is too big. Yeah. And, and I'm here to say it can go twice as big as you're probably thinking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, we're 10 feet from our screen in my living room with the, I think it's, I think the projector is doing 108 inches. Uh, that's, that's in the right, that's in the sweet spot for an immersive it's experience. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time to thank one of our sponsors. Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community-inspired creations. In the latest episode of The Ben Heck Show, to help a viewer with a new baby on the way, Ben builds a power drive add-on for his wheelchair with foot controls. Also, don't forget that if viewers can spot the Ben Heck bobblehead in the background somewhere in the episode, they can register to win an exclusive grand prize. Go to element14.com slash tbhs to find out all the details. And be sure to catch all the Ben Heck Show action every two weeks right here at revision3.com slash tbhs.